Hi, this is uh, Dr. Derek Mahoney, and I'm very pleased uh, to be interviewing uh, Dr. Hisham, who's come all the way from Auckland, New Zealand, uh, to teach over 100 dentists uh, this weekend on everything they need to know about uh, uh, lip and tongue ties. So, uh, Hisham, thank you very much for taking the time. Thank you for having me. Uh, as you know, our philosophy in orthodontics has uh, always been to use the tongue to help develop the palate. Uh, but no matter how good we are at widening the jaw, if the tongue is tied, it's not going to work. And I think it's one of the major causes of relapse in orthodontics for people who've tried expansion and say it was unstable. So, uh, can you share your insights on, on that field? What I'm bringing bring to the picture is how to optimally deal with it in terms of the surgical applications, laser surgical applications. Yeah. The problem has always existed. Mm -hmm. Nothing new about the problem. Mm -hmm. We just weren't aware of how to deal with it. Yes. Yeah. So as, a, as an awareness became more and more practical and pragmatic and, and developed tools and lasers and techniques and diagnostics and all the other stuff, ah, now we can help human beings live better. But one thing the students have loved is that you're not pushing one laser over another. I know that I've done many courses in this field and I almost feel like it's a used car salesman thing, you know. People have one laser and they want you to use that laser and for everything. Exactly. Like exactly. exactly. <laughs> Whereas you, you've taught, you know, when we need to use maybe a soft tissue one, dye, or other uh, you know, exactly. Yeah, exactly. If someone is tongue-tied, right, uh, and you release it, doesn't that increase their chance of sleep apnea? If the adult is tongue-tied and they're 50 or 60 and possibly have sleep apnea, this, this is the question here, which means you are scarred, you are tied down, you, your muscle has grown deformed for 50 years. Your musculature of your mouth, tongue itself, and everything, the floor of the mouth, the tie, and everything else is, is already deformed. Now, if I release that tongue tie at 50 years of age with the right training, you, you cannot go back like this. You cannot go back like this if you release it. It's not possible 100% in those adults with those thick tongues that are deformed to get it to a beautiful position like as if, if we had done it when they were 15 or 20. Well, you need to pick up the tongue tie early, release it, but when you release it, it doesn't mean the tongue's gonna function uh, in the way it's supposed to. So you need to develop the upper jaw to make room for the tongue. Once you've got room for the tongue, the tongue is released, then you can use someone like a my functional therapist to give the child the exercises. And most importantly, after this release, you, know, you want um, the tongue to start functioning normally. It's like anything, if you've had a major operation, uh, they want you to see a physiotherapist to help the recovery. The important role of the dentist, the oral therapist, the hygienist, anyone in the dental team, is to be aware of what is normal, what is abnormal. Yes. Now whether you choose to do the phrenectomy or so, that's up to you. But I think diagnosing it early and referring it at the appropriate time is what this is all about. Absolutely. So once again, Hisham, thank you very much for taking oh, the time. Thank you. And uh, it's been a fantastic course. We hope to get you back for another advanced course in the future, so watch this space, um, and that's a wrap. Be back.